On the opening episode of the Globe Sports Corner, our crew takes a look at the Goshen College men's soccer team and how their enormous roster impacts the season. Our reporters hit the tennis court and explore the ins and outs of a split schedule that leaves both GC teams with just two weeks of regular season matchups. We'll talk Globe Highlight of the Week, Student Everett's Athlete of the Week, and more. All coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. Hi, my name is Dante Stan, and this is the Globe Sports Corner. Welcome to our first show of the 2022-2023 season. This year, it's year number five for Globe TV. We would like to sincerely thank all of our viewers for continuing to support our content. Today's show promises to provide in-depth analysis and a behind-the-scenes look at the world of Goshen College athletics. We start by turning to the Goshen College men's soccer team. After narrowly missing out on the Crossroads League tournament in 2021, the Maple Leafs are back on the grind, and they have their eyes solely focused on the prize. This year, there's plenty of senior leaders to keep the team on track. You know, they have 38 rostered players. Whether or not that's going to be a benefit or a disadvantage throughout the entire course of the season is up for debate. You've got the pros and cons of that. That's right. The 2022 men's soccer team at Goshen College has 38 rostered players. Speaking with players and head coach Victor Newberg, the reason why the roster is so large varies from international recruiting. Well, you know, we have super diverse team and they all feel welcome because the college and, and our program makes them feel like kids family as soon as they walk in campus. To fifth year seniors taking advantage of their extra year of eligibility granted by COVID-19. Another year to play the game that they love at the highest level is, is something they couldn't pass up. But the question remains, is having such a large roster an advantage or a disadvantage? Let's start with the cons. Only so many players can travel. I think on away days, obviously we can't take everyone, so it sucks that we have to leave some people behind, but that's just kind of the way it is. In-game minutes are reserved for the best of the best. Getting guys minutes is, is difficult, but we've also set up games with the alumni and some other reserve teams in the area, um, so everyone has an opportunity to play and stay uh, match fit. Practice can look a little different. Some sitting around for sure, just because, again, only 22 men can play at a time, so there's going to be quite a bit of sitting around. But the general consensus among the team is that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Player competitiveness at an all-time high. Because competition just drives everyone to be the best that they can. The fifth-year seniors provide an enhanced experience and leadership. It affects in a positive way. I think there's a lot of mentorship going on right now. Um, the older guys kind of taking in the freshmen, um, the underclassmen under their wings, and I think that's good. And finally, perhaps the biggest pro, depth. 38 rostered players leaves the Leafs in a comfortable position should the injury bug bite down the stretch. Coach Newberg describes his squad as a big family tree. A big roster just means big goals for the Maple Leafs. Reporting for Globe Sports, I'm Dante Stanton. That Maple Leaf men's squad currently sits at 0-4-2 on the season. and We'll have more details on when their next matchup is and how you can tune in later on in the show. But coming up next, we'll talk with first-year Goshen High School grad Drew Hogan about the men's cross-country squad and how he's literally bursting right at the gate for GC. the best college radio station in the nation. It's not New York City or Chicago, it's Goshen College. Our broadcasting program is just one of Goshen's 35 outstanding majors. At Goshen College, you will work one-on-one -on -one with top professionals and get studio time in your first semester. You can call a game from the playing field or broadcast from a downtown radio studio. How do I know Goshen was the best choice? Right after graduation, I'll start my new job as a radio morning show co-host. Take the next step in your broadcasting career. Welcome back to the Globe Sports Corner. Joining us today in studio is a first-year student athlete at Goshen College, Drew Hogan, a runner on the men's cross-country squad. Drew, how are you today? Good, thanks for having me. Drew, it's great to have you here in the studios. And in coming in as, as a first-year on this really highly touted Goshen College men's mm -hmm. cross-country team, what pulled you into Goshen College and what drew you to this program? Yeah, it was just a great atmosphere. Um, loved the team. Uh, the teammates uh, were always very positive, and I loved what they brought. And Coach Rustin did the same thing. It was very competitive and it was a winning culture, and that's what I wanted to be a part of. That winning culture, uh, you had a little bit of that at Goshen High School as well, which is where you made your transition from. Has the transition from high school to college been easy so far? I know it's in the early mm -hmm. stages, but has it, has it gone well? Yeah, it's definitely a big change with the running aspect of all the mileage and stuff throughout the summer, but I caught on to that pretty quickly. Um, it's been a pretty easy 
um, changed from high school to college, uh, but credit to all the guys that helped me through it. Uh, coming into the season, you're already on a team that is ranked 24th in the national NAIA polls. Does it feel good to just jump right into the success? Uh, yeah, we don't really look into the rankings too much. Um, they don't really mean much to us. We have to go out and perform. Uh, we've been working really hard all summer, so we just want to go out there and show the world, show ourselves, show the coach what well, we've been putting in work for. First invitational of the season, the Twilight Invitational at Indiana Wesleyan. A lot of pressure to start. You know, it's a Crossroads League opponent. It's mm -hmm. Indiana Wesleyan. They're this big juggernaut of the NAIA. Uh, but you go in there and you hang tough with them as well. Uh, you had eight runners in the top 61, and you placed first among your team, 27th overall. What can you tell me about that race and your mindset going into it? Uh, yeah, first 8K, so it was just a lot of learning. Um, went out a little too hot, so we learned from that. Uh, but no, it was good to get one under our belt. Um, just stay competing, and we can obviously, all of us can do better. Yeah, what would you say is the biggest thing that you learned from that first race? Like, I, you talked a little bit about you know, going out a little bit too hot. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the biggest draw from that for you? Five miles is very long. <laughs> uh, Fair enough. We can just start out slower. Just It's a long race. Um, you have a lot of time to make moves. Just don't make the move right off the bat. Talking a little bit about the individual self here, do you have any long-term goals for the season that you personally have set for yourself? I mean, you looking to get into the record books, or is, is just winning at the top of the line? Just winning. Um, if we win, the records may come. Um, but no, just the main focus is obviously meet by meet and doing well in the meets, but just really focus, um, yeah, just focus on the meets. <laughs> Now looking at the team as a whole, I mean, what, what's the, the overall goal? I mean, you guys looking to mm -hmm. go uh, back to nationals for the fourth year in a row. Is that the end goal? Of course. Uh, make it to nationals, and when we get to nationals, see what we can do there. A lot of really, really great competitors on this squad. Have they helped you a lot along this, uh, this early process? Of course, yes. Um, teammates have been everything in practice and then just in the classroom. Um, outside of everything, just hanging out with them, they're always there for you. Um, yeah, it was, it's really nice coming into this sort of atmosphere where everybody's loving, caring, want to work hard with you. Good team culture. Great. It's, it's great, great to hear. Culture. It's great, great to hear. One final question. Mm -hmm. What can we kind of expect in the long run here from Drew Hogan uh, in your, your four-year Goshen College career, but also this, uh, this Goshen College and cross-country squad? Yeah, uh, you can expect me always working hard. I always love working hard um, in classroom, outside of classroom. Whatever I do, I just want to, I just want to be good at it. So I'll, be, I'll work hard and... Just enjoy my time here. It's great to hear. I look forward to talking to you after you win at Nationals. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> after we return, we'll shift the focus to men's and women's tennis squads at GC to touch on some of their big wins so far this year and how they're going to deal with a split schedule that cuts their regular season down to just two weeks. How the Maple Leafs are handling the changeup is next. I'm getting my degree from the college named TV School of the Year three out of the last four years. It's not in Muncie or in Indianapolis. I attend Goshen College, and communication is just one of the 35 outstanding majors offered here. At GC, you will work with professionals and get your hands on the camera in your first semester on campus. How do I know that Goshen College was the best choice? Right after graduation, I start my first job, broadcasting professional baseball. Take the next step towards your career. The Goshen College men's and women's tennis teams, their seasons are in full swing. And believe it or not, they've got less than a week to go in their regular season. Gabe Kermode has all the details. The men's and women's tennis teams have been in full swing this fall. However, their season is different than other fall sports because of their split schedule. Both teams are set to complete their fall season on September 17th before they take a long break until the spring. Senior tennis player Hannah McCoy talks about their sprint of a season. I mean, it's an advantage for school because we get it done super fast, so we're not missing too much time for our degrees and going to classes and things like that. But it also is a huge disadvantage on our bodies because we don't have a lot of time in between for breaks. Coach Atkinson gave some insights on how that plays into the team. So the fall is still what I would consider our primary season. Um, I think we've got a really good chance on both sides this year to be competitive all the way through. Um, maybe get an at-large bid to the national tournament, so we have to play more in the spring and, and show that we can, we can still do it. He also spoke about how the split season is an advantage for the team. I think our kids can come to campus sooner. So tennis across the country in college sports is a spring sport. 
right? And because of that, most of those students can only come to campus the first week of September. So we get an extra three weeks or so, two and a half weeks with our kids. We have an exemption to bring them here early before classes start. You know, a school like ours where we have a lot of international students as well, it's really helpful to get acclimated in that first couple of weeks before classes start. So, you know, you, you just feel more comfortable along the way. McCoy explained how the team stays in shape over the winter. We have a strict program that carries us during season all the way through off season and then into spring season as well. So we're constantly working out. Although the season is flying by, Coach Atkinson is optimistic going forward. Yeah, we feel like we're going to give everybody a battle, right? So everybody on our men and women's side, like everything's going to be competitive from what I've seen so far in the scores. We're happy to beat two teams that beat us last year already. So that's a positive. So we want to play our best tennis. We're focusing on the things that we see in our matches during practices to really fine tune and get better throughout the year. I'm Gabe Kermode reporting for Globe Sports. Thank you to Gabe Kermode and Colin Nichols for their combined efforts on that feature. If you're keeping track of both squads at home, the men's team recently grabbed a win over the nationally ranked Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats, and they sit at 5-2 and two on the year. The women's squad is 1-6 and six overall, but they did come away with their first win of the season this past Saturday on the road. Congrats to the Leafs. Right after the break, we'll take a look at the Globe highlight of the week. Spoiler, it's a long ball. Stay tuned in for the action as well as your Maple Leaf Minute. Goshen College students enjoy an amazing success record, and we have some impressive numbers to prove it. But stories of our graduates say even more, like developing a breakthrough antiviral drug for HIV AIDS, writing number one hits, being named one of Time Magazine's most influential people in the world for cancer research, and enjoying a broadcast career right out of college. They all started with a real world education on a campus that makes everyone feel at home. See how the numbers add up and schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Goshen College can avoid getting off sides. You've got a potential for an opportunity here as Alawai moves up on the ball. Odenio makes the really, really good play. Now you've got to send a long ball in for Goshen College. It's high and hits the back of the net from almost, oh from almost the center of the field oh with one my. second remaining oh in the first my. half. The long one sent in. A beautiful kick there from Carly, taking advantage of the opportunity. Huge, oh huge play from Goshen College to close out the half. The long ball set from almost outside the arc. And that was your Globe highlight of the week. Congrats to Fleet Blake Carly on an absolutely outstanding play. Honored to be on the call beside a very excited Seth Smith Kaufman. And congrats to our Everance Student Athlete of the Week as well. NC Akarapan picked up that award by going 5-0 in singles competition this past week. A big part of that men's tennis squad and their push for the Crossroads League Tournament. We now move to the Maple Leaf Minute. An updated look at what's coming up in Maple Leaf Athletics and where you can catch the game. We'll have live coverage of Goshen College women's volleyball at home this Wednesday at 7 o'clock as the Leafs move into conference play against the University of St. Francis. Catch that game live on 91.1 FM The Globe, globeradio.org, and goleafs.net slash live. Men's and women's soccer will both be in action on Wednesday as well as the women's squad takes on Olivet College at home, 6 o'clock start time. The men are on the road at Georgetown College in Kentucky for their matchup at 7. Men's and women's tennis are both in action at home against Judson University in a non-conference matchup at home on Friday at 2 o'clock. Women's volleyball faces the always tough Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats on the road at Marion at 7 o'clock this Friday. And Saturday, monster day for Maple Leaf Athletics. Men's tennis kicks things off by competing at home against Cardinal Stritch. Men's and women's cross country hit the ground running at the IU Kokomo Invitational at 1030. Women's volleyball stays south in Indianapolis area to take on Marion University at 1 o'clock. And we cap off the night with doubleheader coverage of men's and women's soccer inside the friendly confines of the John Ingold Athletic Complex. The women take on Lords University at 5, and the men will look to knock off Brescia University at 7. Pre-game coverage for those games starts at 445 sharp on 91.1 FM, The Globe, and GoLeafs.net slash live. That's going to wrap up the first edition of the Globe Sports Corner for 2022. For more Globe content, check out our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at 91.1 The Globe and globeradio.org. For all of us at Globe Sports, I'm Dante Stan. Thank you for watching, and tune in every two weeks for more Globe Sports content. Have a great week.